The lattice plotting system in R is a plotting system um, that's different from the base plotting system, uh, and it works very differently. And it's useful for plotting, often for plotting kind of high dimensional data and for lo uh, making lot, many, many plots at once. If you recall in the base plotting system, it was possible to um, put multiple plots on the same graphics device uh, using the MF row or MF call arguments. And you can make panels of plots uh, to look at many different features. Um, and the lattice, the lattice plotting system is, qu is kind of designed to really make, to, to kind of optimize that type of plot and to make uh, very high density uh, plots. And so it can be useful in many situations. And so I'll talk about some of the, the functions in the lattice system here. So the lattice plotting system is, is implemented in the lattice package, so you have to load the package in order to use it. Uh, underlying the lattice package uh, is what's called the grid package, which uh, implements a lot of the kind of low-level plumbing uh, of, the, of the lattice graphics system. And you, you typically won't have to call functions from the grid package directly, but it's useful to know that underneath there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, code that's implemented in the grid package. Uh, and so the lattice, the lattice package builds on top of grid and gives you a, a number of kind of user level functions to, to employ. Um, the, la the, the one thing about the lattice plotting system is, is that it does not have a kind of two phase uh, aspect like the base plotting system did and where you kind of, in the base plotting system, if you recall, you kind of create the plot and then you annotate it with separate functions. Now here in the lattice plotting system, you have to create the entire plot all at once in a single function call. And so you have to specify all the details uh, within that function call and, and because you won't have a chance really to annotate it afterwards. Um, so some of the main functions in lattice are xy plot. This is probably the most uh, important function. It's basically used for making scatter plots. Um, there's bw plot for, bo for box plots, histogram for histograms, strip plot uh, is kind of like a box plot, but there's uh, but it uses points. Uh, the dot plot uh, plots uh, points on where it, where it will look like violin strings. Uh, SPLOM is for scatter plot matrix. Uh, it's kind of like the Perry's function in the ba in the base plotting system. And level plot and contour plot are for plotting uh, image data. And so I'll just talk a little bit about the xy plot uh, function right now because I think it's the most important. Uh, the basic function call for xy plot is that you have a formula kind of notation. So you have y tilde x. So the y is going to be whatever's on your y axis and x is going to be whatever's on your x axis. And then you have this vertical bar which separates um, what are called conditioning variables. And so f and g are going to be categorical ve uh, variables. Uh, that you condition on. So, um, so, for example, and the idea is that you want to uh, to kind of interpret this function call in words. The idea is that I want to look at the scatter plot of y and x for every level of f and g. All right. And so you don't have to use two different uh, categorical variables. There. I, I just wanted to show that you could. And so, um, and then the second argument is the data argument, and and this is a, the data frame uh, where the variables x, y, f, and g can be found. Uh, if there's no data frame there, then it will look in your workspace for the uh, variables to plot. So here's just a very simple scatter plot. I load the lattice package and the data sets package, and I'm plotting the ozone and wind variables from the air quality data frame. So you can see I just did ozone till the wind. So I've got ozone on the y-axis and wind on the x-axis. And this is your basic scatter plot, uh, which looks very much like a scatter plot uh, in the base plotting system. Uh, notice that the defaults are a little, a little bit different. It does use open circles, but they're colored blue by default. Now here's a slightly more complicated uh, lattice plot. So here I've, I've gotten the same data frame, but I've converted the month variable into a factor. Uh, and now I'm plotting ozone versus wind by month. So you can interpret the formula as I want to look at the relationship between ozone and wind for each level of month. And so month goes from 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, so from the month of May to the month of September. And you can see the relationship between ozone and wind. Uh, it t appears to change uh, across the month. So it doesn't, there doesn't appear to be uh, you know, much relationship in May or June. But you can see in, in July and August, there's a relatively strong relationship. There's a negative one. So more wind means less ozone. And you can see by September, that relationship is starting to die down a little bit. Um, so I, it's very easy. To, so that's the, one of the, po the power of the xy plot function in Lattice is that I can make these multidimensional panels very simply with just a single function call. Uh, and if you recall, in the base plotting system, I would there would have been many, many function calls to create this plot. And here I just used a single line. So now I'm, so I'm looking at three different variables here, the month, the uh, ozone, and wind. And they're all kind of arranged in one panel, which is very convenient. So um, 
the lattice functions behave a little bit differently, and it's worth noting uh, the difference between lattice and the base graphics. Uh, base graphics functions plot data directly to a graphics device. So if you call this the screen device, there's PDF files, or all, there are all kinds of graphics devices. Uh, what lattice functions do is they they don't actually they don't specifically plot anything. Uh, what they do is they return an object of class trellis, um, and then this object has to be printed. Uh, in order for the data in the plot to kind of go to the graphics device. So there's a, there is a two-stage aspect there, but most of the time um, this aspect is invisible to the user because what happens is that the, you, when you call a function like xyplot, it returns an object of class trellis, but then it auto-prints um, that object, and so the, the auto-printing feature of R will make it so that it automatically sends the plot to the graphics device. So most of the time you don't have to worry about this uh, two-step process. Uh, but it's worth noting that you can, in, in theory, save the plot object to an R object, and then it'll be sitting in your workspace. Uh, now, you can theoretically store that object, uh, but uh, it's probably not uh, wise to do this. It's better to save the code uh, that generates the plot and the data. So you can see this lattice behavior in just in this simple bit of code here. So here I'm calling the xyplot function. I'm saving to an object called p, and then I'm printing p. Uh, and that's when the plot appears. So if you run this code, after the first line of code, uh, nothing will happen. But after the second line, the plot will appear. Uh, so if you just call xyplot, then, it use, then we use what's called the auto-printing feature of R.